When Barney Springboro gains telekinetic powers from a lab accident, he uses it to humble bullies and get what he wants. At Ralph Waldo Emerson High School, science nerd Barney Springboro works overtime on an experiment involving mice. Just then, his best friend, Peyton Nichols, enters the lab and wonders why Barney has whiskey in the room. Barney replies that he's feeding alcohol to the mice because the scuba club wants a report on diving under the influence. As Barney continues his observation, Peyton congratulates his friend for his successful Ultra Grow Mixture Fertilizer, to which Barney adds that he might get a research grant for it. After this, the two head to the school assembly. On their way there, Peyton, along with some other boys, questions Barney's lack of interest in girls as well as the upcoming prom. As the boys pass by the hallway, Peyton snaps a photo of the cheerleader captain in an embarrassing position. He jokes about putting it on the front page of the school paper, but she threatens to sue. Not long after, the assembly begins and the cheerleaders present a brief performance. The principal, Mr. Walter J. Coolidge, also makes a short but rather awkward motivational speech. Still, Ms. Rose Bernhardt is so impressed by this that she kisses him for it. When the assembly is over, Peyton goes straight to Mrs. Corrine Updike's office, where they secretly copulate on her desk. Elsewhere, Coach Dexter Jones visits Barney in the lab. As he secretly sips on a bottle of whiskey, he accidentally spills the Ultra Grow mixture on a separate beaker filled with another solution. He then goes on to warn Barney that girls will mess his life up, just as they did to him. Just then, Peyton enters the room, and Dexter leaves shortly after. Barney continues his experiment and plans to use the contaminated solution on the mice. As he's looking away, Peyton adds beer to the beaker, thinking it'll make Barney's experiment more interesting. Suddenly, Bernadette Holland, the class president, knocks on the door to take photos of Barney and the genetically modified orchids that he grew for the principal. However, Peyton dismisses her, saying that Barney is busy. Peyton doesn't stay for long, and as he bids Barney goodbye, the mouse that was fed with the contaminated solution summons a piece of cheese into its cage. When Barney sees this, he attempts to feed the mouse another dose of the solution to counteract the cheese. However, his hand is held back by a strong force, causing him to knock the solution off the table and cause an explosion. Barney falls unconscious, and when he wakes up, he goes straight home. There, his parents confront him. Despite their son's academic excellence, they speculate that he's a junkie because he's antisocial and doesn't eat much. After inspecting him for marks, Barney's dad drops the issue, but his mom rants on about it. As she finishes yelling at him, the door mysteriously slams on its own, earning Barney another scolding from his mom. The next day at school, Bernadette invites Barney on their way to class. This annoys Peyton, so he tells Barney to be cautious around her. They soon head to Miss Bernhardt's class, where Principal Coolidge attends to observe. As one of their classmates reads his poem, Barney fantasizes about Jane Mitchell, a popular but vain girl in his class. Suddenly, Miss Bernhardt calls Barney, so he quickly covers up the bulge in his pants. As everyone looks at him, a mysterious force drops the map above the chalkboard on Miss Bernhardt, causing her to slip and land on Principal Coolidge's lap. After the class, Peyton tells Barney that Jane looks cute, so he asks her out on a date. However, Jane declines, boasting that she's seeing Robert Walcott, a pre-law college student. As they are talking, Barney stares at Jane's chest. Just then, her blouse bursts open. Robert suddenly appears, angrily asking what happened. However, Jane says no one touched her, and it was only the wind. He seems to buy her excuse, but Robert warns the boys that he'll break their faces the next time they come near her. As Jane and Robert walk to the car, her blouse opens again, which makes her boyfriend pissed. Assuming what's happening, Barney heads back to the lab, where he tests if he can actually control things with his mind. To his surprise, he lifts broken glass and even sweeps the floor using only his mind. This proves that the accident from yesterday gave him telekinetic abilities. Suddenly, Bernadette walks in, witnessing lab tools floating in the air. Barney switches his abilities off, but she refuses to dismiss what she sees. Because of this, Barney telekinetically cracks her glass out of annoyance. Unbeknownst to them, Peyton has been spying through the window, and he witnessed the whole thing. He then goes on to join them in the lab. Bernadette then urges Barney to show his discovery to the world, but he refuses. Peyton agrees, saying that it's too much publicity. With this, the three agree to keep Barney's telekinetic abilities a secret. That night, Barney comes home late and misses supper. When his dad grounds him for it, he uses his abilities to make him spill juice on himself. Barney feels a hint of regret, but he just heads to his room. There, he propels his model spaceship into the air, imagining his dog, Alvi, attacking the crew inside. After Barney has had his fun, he realizes that he's hungry, so he sets out to get something to eat. To make sure no one discovers that he's gone, he puts his ventriloquist dummy on the bed. However, his mother barges inside and angrily questions who's sleeping in his room. Realizing that he's busted, Barney uses his abilities to scare his mom with the dummy. 
She hardly runs away, which allows Barney to go outside and get a burger. The next day at school, Bernadette barges into the lab to test Barney's power for controlled distance on substances with different physical properties. First, she makes Barney empty the air out of a can, then the water out of a tank. He successfully does both, proving that his telekinetic powers work on all states of matter. Just then, Peyton enters the lab, and Bernadette leaves shortly after. They have a big baseball game that day, and Peyton asks Barney for a little favor. Later on, the baseball game begins. Barney sits on the bench with Coach Dexter and another player named Alan, who keeps picking his nose. Dexter gets so annoyed at Alan that he commands him to suck on his finger. The game begins, and Barney manipulates the ball to bounce into Peyton's hand. However, the opposing team's best batter scores a home run after this, making Barney feel bad about not doing anything about it. During their quick break, Peyton tells Barney to play it cool until the ninth inning. He does this, and their team just keeps on garnering scores. When it's finally Barney's turn to be the hitter, he scores the winning home run. As Barney goes home later that day, some students from the opposing baseball team mock him by flashing their bottoms. In retaliation, Barney only bursts the girls' tops open and sends the boys over a tree branch. Meanwhile, Principal Coolidge attempts to visit the lab to see the progress of his orchids, but he can't seem to open the door. Dexter runs into him and explains that only Barney has a key. Principal Coolidge then expresses his frustration to Miss Bernhardt, insisting that he needs to see the progress. The next day, Bernadette convinces Barney to collaborate with an expert to publish their experiments in a research journal. As Barney appreciates the idea, they catch Miss Bernhardt sneaking into the lab through the window. She peeks into the chamber where the orchids are and discovers that Barney is also growing Mary Jane. She immediately goes and urges Principal Coolidge to sneak into the lab with her. She then proudly presents the chamber for him to see her discovery, only to find the Mary Janes gone. Principal Coolidge scolds Miss Bernhardt for this, then he leaves through the window. However, Dexter runs into him, leaving the coach thinking that the principal was doing sneaky things with Miss Bernhardt. In the incinerator room, Barney and Bernadette burn the plants. Dexter suddenly walks in, thinking that the kids are getting down and dirty too. Before Barney leaves, the coach tells him to take Bernadette to a more decent place next time. When he's alone, Dexter opens the incinerator, causing himself to be high. In his head, he goes biking with Albert Einstein. Then, he suddenly gets chased by his wife riding a chariot. Einstein asks why his wife is going crazy, and Dexter explains that he's been eating salami despite her disapproval. Just then, his wife brings out a bazooka that shoots salami, making Dexter paddle for his life. A few days after, Emerson High opens a school fair for their graduating students. Barney spends the whole day with Bernadette while also helping Peyton beat Robert in every booth they try. Robert gets tired of his childish games, so he challenges Peyton to a drinking contest. The first one to throw up in the spinning cup ride loses, but Peyton secures his win by asking Barney to spin Robert's cup faster. After losing, Robert goes home, so Jane hangs out with Peyton and the others instead. Later, the boys buy food while Jane and Bernadette wait by the tables. Suddenly, some jocks bother them, so Barney and Peyton interfere. With his telekinesis, they send the jocks flying. That night, Peyton takes Jane to his studio, where he pretends to be mature by drinking champagne and listening to classical music. He pretentiously explains that the music relaxes him because he's too uptight with choosing Harvard or Yale. He also adds that he's torn between choosing pre-med, pre-law, or taking over his dad's corporation. When he mentions that he'll get 100 grand per year if he works for his dad, Jane's face lights up. He then goes on to say that he feels more mature lately, which ultimately leads to him scoring a makeout session with Jane. Unbeknownst to her, Peyton is secretly taking pictures of them. Elsewhere, Barney and Bernadette enjoy some wieners by the road. They first discuss Peyton, whom Bernadette admits that she had a crush on before. She asks about his interests in girls, but he hasn't had much luck. They later go to Barney's house, where their feelings for each other develop. However, they never get to kiss because of his highly vigilant mom. The next day, the two go on a date where they play tennis. After this, they make fun of a guy by making his own toy plane chase him. When they get enough of this, they sit in the shade, where they eventually kiss. The two decide to elevate things further, so they head to the school lab. There, Barney uses his telekinesis to put a mattress on the table. He then telekinetically lifts his date on it, and they make love. The following day, Robert asks Peyton to a gambling event at his frat house. Just then, Jane appears and discreetly tells Peyton that she faked everything from the other night. Meanwhile, Principal Coolidge gets a response from a personal ad about meeting a woman for a date. Mrs. Updike urges him to go, and he gets hyped about it. Elsewhere, Peyton pleads with Barney to go to Robert's frat party so he can manipulate their way into winning. He tells him to bring Bernadette along, but when Barney asks her, she gets upset that he's using his ability to gamble. That night, Principal Coolidge shows up to his date adorned with gold chains and a pink suit. 
However, he gets shocked after realizing that his date is Miss Bernhardt. Surprisingly, the two have intense chemistry and cannot help but copulate under the table. Meanwhile, Barney ends up going with Peyton. At the frat house, Robert rigs the roulette wheel to prevent them from winning, but with Barney's help, Peyton easily pulls in tons of cash. Soon, Barney starts feeling guilty and wants to go home. His friend tells him to go for one more throw, then they'll leave. However, Barney gets too hyperfixated on controlling the ball that the whole wheel levitates. He quickly leaves, and before Peyton runs after him, he announces to everyone that Robert rigged the wheel. While everyone attacks Robert for cheating, Peyton catches up to his friend but fails to make him stay because he's set on leaving. Later, Barney tries calling Bernadette, but she refuses to talk to him. Because of this, he heads to the school lab where he drowns himself in whiskey. The next morning, Bernadette sees him looking wasted. Barney immediately apologizes for gambling and asks for a second chance to go to the prom with her. He adds that he never felt this way until he met her, so Bernadette finally gives in and agrees to go to the prom with him. On prom night, Barney's mom brings two priests into their home, claiming that her son is possessed. When he tries to leave, they stuff tranquilizer tablets into his mouth, making him throw up. They're convinced that it's a sign that he is possessed, so they try to prevent Barney from leaving. He uses his dummy to keep them at bay while his father is sound asleep. Meanwhile, Jane gets crowned as the prom queen. Peyton, who came with two dates, also wins as prom king. As the winners, the two lead the dance, but the young man gets a little too touchy. While everyone joins in on the dance floor, Principal Coolidge and Miss Bernhardt have their own private party backstage. Barney finally arrives, and he immediately gives his date an orchid corsage. After this, the two head to the dance floor, where they enjoy their time slow dancing. When the song is over, Barney and Bernadette get some drinks. Just then, Peyton approaches them, complimenting the two as a couple. He then asks if Barney is still mad at him, which Bernadette figures is her cue to leave. When Barney replies that they're all good, Peyton brings out some plane tickets to Vegas, where he claims they can continue their gambling. This pisses Barney off, so he ditches his friend. Just then, Robert and Jane bump into Peyton. Robert says they have a score to settle, but Peyton replies that he wants to make amends by giving a peace offering. He then hands an envelope to Robert, but when he opens it, he fumes in anger when he sees Jane on Peyton's couch. This makes Robert and his pals gang up on Peyton, but before he even lands a punch, Barney uses his telekinesis to pull down Jane's gown as a distraction. He then continues to use his abilities to send Robert and his friends flying across the room. Peyton thanks his friend for having his back, then he apologizes for the Vegas trip earlier. Meanwhile, Jane throws a watermelon at Peyton, but it lands on Barney's head. Pissed, Barney pulls down all of her clothing, leaving her in just her undergarments. After this, Barney summons a strong gust of wind that tears off all of the students' clothes. With everyone running around, Dexter feasts his eyes on the scenery. Just then, he spots Principal Coolidge and Miss Bernhardt hiding, so he teases them for being at it again. Suddenly, a girl runs past Dexter, and he tries to chase her. However, his wife tackles him to the ground. In the middle of the commotion, Barney gets hit by a fire hose, which knocks him unconscious. Later on, he wakes up to Bernadette and Peyton. After getting hit on his head, he groans that his powers have become more troublesome. He then claims that his head is tingling, and when he attempts to move something from a distance, he realizes that he has lost his telekinetic powers. Disappointed, Peyton says it was too good to last, but at least Barney's not injured. After this, Peyton excuses himself to chase some girls while Bernadette and Barney head home. When they get outside, Barney reveals that he only faked the disappearance of his telekinesis to make Peyton stop bugging him. With this, he grabs Bernadette by the waist and propels them into the night sky. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.